we normally imagine that when a particle and an antiparticle interact they annihilate and burst into pure energy such pure annihilation though can only happen when it is exactly the corresponding antiparticle for example an electron and a positron can annihilate to produce photons the same can happen for a u quark with an anti u quark but if you take an electron and an anti muon they won't annihilate the interaction between them would not be much different to an electron interacting with a proton for example it can form an exotic atom with the electron orbiting around the positively charged anti muon which can act as the nucleus this system can be called a bound state of electron and anti muon it is known by the name muonium it is a reasonably stable bound state but unfortunately the muons decay in about 2 microseconds into a positron and two neutrinos now what would happen to this positron and electron i know many of you expect them to annihilate and release energy but it is also possible for them to form a bound state called positronium before they eventually annihilate the positronium is very unstable with electron and positron orbiting around each other without a nucleus and wanting to eliminate one another as soon as they get close releasing two or three photons depending on their spin states such bound states between matter and antimatter are much more common than you think most common of these bound states are called mesons where one quark and an anti quark form a particle here you can see a non exhaustive list of mesons i'm sure you knew all of them but if you want to show off your particle physics knowledge maybe you can try to remember these pions the most abundant of mesons there are two charged pions and a neutral pion the positively charged pion pi plus is made up of a u quark and an anti d quark or u d bar and it has a mean lifetime of about 10 to the power minus 8 seconds the negative pion pi minus is the anti particle of this positively charged pion and it has the quark content u bar d and both of them has a mass of about 140 mev and their main decay is into an anti muon and a muon neutral here as i have told you the anti particle is not the same type as of the particle and hence they cannot annihilate each other so the u and the anti d quark only decays into a muon anti muon and a neutrino and not into energy or photons the case is a bit different for the neutral pions since they are made of the same kind of quarks for example a neutral pion is a superposition state of u u bar and d d bar so they are they have the particle and antiparticle version of either the u quark or the d quark and it has a mass of about 135 mev and it decays much much faster as i said since we have a particle and an anti particle corresponding anti particle they will annihilate very fast and they are highly unstable and as you can imagine it decays into photons and you can have a look through this list and you can see a general trend that if the meson is made up of the same type of anti particle it decays very fast with like a mean lifetime less than 10 to the power minus 17 seconds and if the meson is made up of two different kinds of quark in the particle and anti particle state they tend to live much longer but even then the mean lifetime is about 10 to the power minus 8 seconds or so and as you can see as the mass increases the particles become lesser and less stable with pions kaons and the k mesons showing the most lifetime the particle anti particle bound states are not limited to mesons and even this list of mesons is incomplete recently we have found an evidence for the existence of a toponium bound state which contains a top quark and an anti top quark this discovery was quite astonishing considering that the top quark themselves can only survive about 10 to the power minus 25 seconds so to find that they actually form a bound state before they decay is quite impressive i will discuss about how we discovered these mesons and other particles in a different video but i know many of you have 
this question in your mind that why do you even care about these particles if they if at best they last for a few nanoseconds the thing is that the knowledge about these particles are very crucial for our understanding of how things work in this universe for example when a high energy cosmic ray hits us a lot of particles are generated in a shower in the atmosphere so even if we just want to protect our space probes and satellites and pretty much every other computer systems which are radiation prone we need to know what it is how it behaves interacts and how it affects us we also need to know how long do they travel how much energy do they carry what are the best materials to stop them and how much the how thick the protection should be and so on and so forth even impressive is that we are not only studying them we have already used them at the frontiers of physics and technology the muonium state which i talked about is already produced at this experiment to create the very first control beam of muons i have already talked about this experiment in this video here you can check it out these bound states also play a huge role in our particle collider experiments as you know we only see some bits of energy deposition in the detectors and from that we try to decipher what kind of physics occurred and what particles could have been there so many of these mesons have a very unique signature based on what their mass charge lifetime and their preferred modes of decay we use this information to understand and reconstruct the underlying mechanisms and the physics for example we have something called a ring image cherenkov detector which can distinguish the signal between a pion and a kion mostly based on their mass and the momentum this helps us to have a finer understanding of how things work inside the detectors we also use the informations we know about the pions for identifying tau leptons in such interactions because when the tau leptons decay they give a signature one or three charged pion tracks and then we use the information we know about the pions to understand and study the physics going on so to conclude with the question we started today yes most of the matter and antimatter will annihilate each other but it is way more complicated than that and it is way more fun when matter and antimatter live together